Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Deaths, back with another Kami Hime Project video. This is going to be the fifth guild competition that we're getting. For those of you that have been around long enough, in fact, we had one not too long ago, I think it was a month or two ago. But, um, these are pretty much rank based events, but you can still get some stuff if you at least participate in it. So, my suggestion is to actually do that, regardless of how strong your teams might happen to be, but the general thing still applies. There is six elemental versions of skill measurement cone, and you need to do as much as you possibly can to score as high as possible. But, generally speaking, these events, they're more centered towards the stronger players in the game, if you want to be honest. So, if you want to really get the most out of it, you need to have built up a very strong team, preferably across each and every element. But, like I said, it's fine if you don't, because you can still get some stuff and just save save up medals for later on, if need be. But, um, anyways, this one happens to be maximum damage in one turn. What that means is it all the damage you do throughout the fight does not total up. Whatever you do in one turn is what's going to count. If you somehow do more damage in another turn, then that's what's going to count for your score. So you will score regardless of what happens. Because you can actually give up the fight and just not go through the rest of it if you want to. Which might actually be preferred given what happens in this one. But um... Anyways, if you feel like you've unloaded enough damage and probably won't surpass it even further, then you, that's an option as well. But you have 11 turns to pretty much get the most out of that run, so keep that in mind. And there's certain elements that will open up on different days of the week, but basically you want, want to have Sunday as your most available day for it, so you can just do all of them if need be. The way the wiki has this listed to it, it goes by the most recent, but that's not what we're going by. What we're going by is the fifth one. And this one is very, very interesting. First and foremost, it will keep increasing its defense as the fight progresses. I don't remember exact amount, but by the time the end of the fight's over, it will have a 50% defense increase, and that and this is where I don't know the amount. That will pretty much be anywhere between a 30 or to 40% damage cut, I do believe. So, that said, it is going to really reduce the damage you can deal to it the longer the fight goes. And on top of that, if it's in normal or raging mode, it is dealing percentage based damage based on your maximum HP. Preferably, you want to keep it at a raging mode if you're trying to build up as much as possible to the last second because stackable buffs and whatnot can tend to really carry out some damage and whatnot, but you don't want to unload as much as possible until near the end of the fight. So the longer the fight goes, the more risk you have of it. But if you can keep it keep it out of raging mode as much as possible then you probably shouldn't die because you'll get like 10 turns to really build up stuff and then just unload on the last turn the longer it's out of raging mode the better because if it's in normal mode the entire time you're only taking 80 percent so you should never need the heal but at the same time that's still that's still dependent on one strategy the other strategy is to unload as early as possible that way the defense isn't much of an issue and you can just go from there. Also, you will not take any damage whatsoever if it's in stun and it gets a turn, so there's that. But it will still buff its defense no matter what. It is 5% defense per stack and it will add up to 50% when it's done. Now, that said, the, like I said, there's two methods. The first is to just pretty much unload as quickly as possible. Save all your ability damage and whatnot as much as you can, but still unload early on. In fact, if need be, I would spend some time just building up your burst gauge and whatnot, and if you can get it off in two turns, then there you go. But, um, another method is, and this is something I didn't know personally, 
you can actually brute force the defense increases by countering it with defense drops. Before, I thought that you can only get 50% defense down, and that's that. That's actually just the limit. Something I recently found out, because there was a player that um, told me from DMM, but it turns out that if an enemy buffs its defense, then it more or less nullifies part of your defense drop. If that makes sense. So say an enemy buffs its defense by 20%, you need to do an extra 20% on top of the 50% if you do not get rid of that debuff. I mean, if you do not get rid of that buff. So that said, you can actually brute force it. So if you can get as much defense down as possible, you can still just not worry about the defense increases and still just go normally trying to build up damage. Personally speaking, I'd say do whatever works best for you on both of those cases. This is where I could say that um, if you go that method, Hercules is, or even Arthur is pretty much paramount because the axe they have will give you 25% defense down. And that will greatly help towards it. There's some Kami he made that can get 30% defense um, debuffs in, as well. And if you can pull it off, all you need is 100%. Me personally, I could do a 20% sniper shot because I don't have 30%. I can get the um, Herc Axe. I can get Iris. I can get Lug. And then I can get anybody that does an A-frame defense down. So that will get me close to 100%, but it won't be all the way there. So I can find some way to do do all that. The other method, like I said, unload as early as possible. That means you just build up your burst gauges, and then when you're ready to full burst, that's when you debuff, that's when you do all your buffs, that's when you um do your full burst and your ability damage, and then just count that as your score. Now, that said, keep in mind that if you're doing a... Vigor based setup, you are losing HP over time, so you want to have your HP as high as possible. Me personally, I use quite a bit of Vigor on my light grid, so I'd have to go with the nuke as soon as possible strategy. So that's something to know. But honestly, if the defense, if the um, HP drop by a percentage also affects how much your burst gauge goes, I probably do have a good chance of getting off a full burst on turn two. It depends. Well, after turn two, not on. It it may depend. It depends on how much it really gives. But um, honestly, it dep it it's just basically whatever setup you really feel is more comfortable because the defense increases is going to be the biggest issue. But either way, if you decide to um do a drawn out strategy, Pride might actually be a better um, focus for you. If you decide to do a faster strategy, then you're going to want to try and make the most of the Vigor that you you get. So keep that in mind. And like I said, if you somehow can get it into stun, you're just not taking any damage whatsoever. So keep that in mind. Now, I don't know if this changes, but you get rewards based on how much score you get, and this score is cumul cumulative, as in even if you don't keep any of the um, previous runs as your final score, this still counts. So, like say, you get roughly 17 million as a score, and then next thing you know you're getting 19 million. That previous 17 million still adds to this total. So you only need to really get 55 million to pretty much get everything. I don't know if this is the same amount for this current event. Now, that will get you quite a bit of um, guild medals. It will get you some some stuff as well. Like, say, gems and um, gotcha tickets. What it really doesn't give you too much of is definitely the guild medals. Because you need to get ranks in order to really get the most guild medals. So keep that in mind. But it will allow any player to rack up guild medals, except for the fact that you need to save those up. Because given all the stuff that we have access to right now, the only thing that is ever worth guild or tower medals is the um, break limit set. 
and it is 10,000 tower medals or 15,000 guild medals. If you're not doing five digit trades, you're pretty much scamming yourself because nothing else is worth it, not even a gacha tickets anymore. You can get so many gacha tickets from so much other stuff. Just from the epic quests alone, you're getting a huge amount of gacha tickets because it is two per epic quest that's unlocked. More is going to come later. Raid medals will feed you a good amount of gacha tickets. You can trade treasures for them. There is events that give you gacha tickets. In fact, if it's a raid event and not a union event, raid events will give you a good 22 gacha tickets, basically. Gacha tickets are so common now that you do not need to trade any sort of guild or raid medal. I mean, you don't need to trade guild or tower medals for it. If you're trading any sort of medals for gacha tickets, it's raid medals. So keep that in mind. So you're only really... It's only really worth getting the um the purple SSR break limit items. That's it. That said, those things are really powerful. Even if you're a player that spends a lot on the game, it is still worth. Because of the simple fact that it is a free break limit on something that you normally don't get as often as other stuff. And in a lot of cases, it can be very, very helpful. In my case, I will definitely be trying to aim for that. Because I am very close to getting a maxed out Kaiser for my light team. I've already have one for fire. And if I really wanted to, I can grind out. I don't want orbs and instead give it to a wind um, Kaiser and max it out. So I got plenty of options with just that. And then I still have 100% on Dolan's, which will greatly benefit from that. But um, regardless, it's definitely the thing you go after. It's definitely the thing you go after. Do not go after anything else. Spend either 10,000 or 15,000 at a time in one single trade. But anyways, that's all for this. More is going to come soon because you'll definitely see my attempt on this. And also, I should point out that um, even though it's best suited to um, do elemental damage, like elemental advantage damage, you want to be able to um, still do as much as possible. So if you know for a fact that, say, your wind team isn't going to do as much as your dark team, then go with the dark team. But you can't really get too comfortable with that strategy because I think it's around the 7th guild competition where it'll have some sort of counter towards that, which means now is more a time than ever to try and build up all six elements. You still want to focus on one one or two more than the rest so they can do most of the grinding, but these guild competitions will only get harder from here on out. I hear the next one is absolutely infuriating, so there's that. But this one right here also seems pretty irritating as well, to be quite honest, because you really have to, um, it's either one extreme or the other, so keep that in mind. But anyways, that's all for this. Like I said, more is going to come soon, and that's all for now, guys. Take care.